All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the world. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The High King by Lloyd Alexander. This is book number five in his Prydain Chronicles, and uh, this came out in 1968. It won the Newbery Award for the best children's book in the entire history of the universe that year. And um, so let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about the covers first, because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. And this one, again, has a great cover. This is, this is the original version I bought when I was a, a kid. It's got the nice blue end papers. Great cover here. I forget who the artist was. I mean, I've mentioned I've reviewed all four of the previous novels, and I I mentioned the name of the artist because it's the same artist that does all the covers. And we'll take a look here at all the covers. I'll zoom in there, and you can see all the covers are really cool. I like all of them anyway. Let's talk about this book, The High King, book number four. And, um, if you want to see my reviews of the other previous books, all you need to do is type in my name, Durfee, and, you know, the name of the book, like, say, The Black Cauldron, and the video review will magically appear upon your television screen. Uh, let's get to this. Okay. It's coming down to the end. I mean, this is going to wrap up. This is one of my favorite series that I read when I was a kid. I read and reread and reread these books as a kid so many times. I ha almost have them memorized. Rereading them again is a joy, and not only that, but rereading them as a writer. Now that I'm a writer myself, and I can just actually drink in and appreciate the wonderful, exquisite prose that Lloyd Alexander uses in these books to just evoke emotion and a vivid scenery all throughout. And the dialogue is just super good. And um, my first literary crush. Of all time was Elan Y, the, the girl character in the book. And just so you can get an idea of who Elan Y is, she's um, the girl in red there on the cover. Not those, not those, but this, the girl in red. My first literary crush ever. I, I just absolutely adore everything about Elan Y's character and how she act, uh, acts and reacts to our other main character, Taran. So anyway, this book... It's winding down the story. Um, Turan, Princess Elanwai, Fluter Flan, Hen Wen, they're all there, all our favorites. Gurgi, this is a, 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 a story that's kind of based upon Welch legend and folklore. And it's all, everything is Wales, everything, all, this, all the naming conventions of the characters and places and monsters and creatures. They're Welch in nature. It's just really cool. Um, and Lloyd Alexander did that on purpose. He makes a he takes a lot of pains to in the introductions to these books to talk a lot about whales and the legends and the landscape and everything. And then he injects all of that knowledge into these books with just seamless ease. It seems like it. It just it's absolutely brilliant. These books are just absolutely brilliant from book one all the way to this book. Um, and some of the themes of this book, you know, that stuck out to me right off the bat were internal, the, the, the battles we have, internal struggle, not only epic battles that are physical, and how those have deep, deep consequences, how war just in general has consequences for not only nations and, uh, and large groups of people, but just the internal struggle it creates within individuals. Um, he really delves into that a lot. And then, and then of course, we reach the final choices of our faithful little uh, character, Gurgi. And, um, and, and some of the choices that this little, little fellow has to make are almost unbearable to watch him go through. And in the end, in the end, um, it's up to the reader to decide, is this a happy ending or a sad ending? It's really you know, up to you to decide. It's a very satisfying conclusion for sure. Um, but also poignantly and deeply sort of moving and sad in a way. Um, now, uh, what happens? Okay, the sword Dernwin, the most powerful weapon 
in all of the realm has fallen into the hands of R1, well, it's R1, there's no thing as R1, it's A-R-A-W-N, R on, Arun, the Death Lord. Oh, that doesn't sound good. You don't want the most powerful magic weapon in all the realm to fall into the hands of the Death Lord. That does not sound good. So anyway, um, Turan and, the, and uh, Prince Gwydion and uh, the whole crew of adventurers, they, um, you know, they have to take up the quest to go get the sword and... Uh, you know, the book starts right where book four, Turan Wanderer, left off, and right where book three, Castle of Lear, when, when, ended off, where uh, Princess Elenwai uh, comes back from uh, her uh, little uh, princess training that she's been to. Anyway, and then Turan, Turan uh, comes back from his adventure that he went through, and uh, now they're all reunited again and having fun on their adventure and suffering, you know, tragic loss and lots of adventure. Um, and they go uh, go uh, on in quest of the sword. Not only that, but the Turan and the Prince Gwydion, and they've got to row, they've got to get an army together to fight against s several enemies. Not just Arwen the Death Lord, but there's also um, the um, the Enchantress uh, Ar the Witch Enchantress Arkren, who uh, and it's I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's A C H R E N, and. Uh, She's just sort of like the evil uh, witch enchantress person. And they, they go to uh, Mount Dragon. I mean, a lot of this I mean, is just a typical evil lord, evil witches trying to overtake the fantasy realm type thing. Magic weapons need to help us out here. And we've got to go on a quest to get this all taken care of. And not only that, but there's going to be a big battle too. It's pretty, pretty standard, typical, like fantasy stuff but you have to understand this was written in the 1960s back before all of those none of those fantasy tropes were really tropes yet this guy kind of was one of the dudes that set the trope standard of the of the orphan farm boy with a major destiny evil lords and magic weapons uh you know tolkien did it about the same time as lloyd alexander i mean back then they were really the only two literally they all, I mean, you know, there might have been somebody else that I'm forgetting about, but, you know, my memory, well, I was not even born then, so you cannot blame me. High King, 10 out of 10. Every one of these books has gotten a 10 out of 10. It's just such a great, great group of books. One of the best fantasy series ever, and probably one of the most nostalgic rereads I've had in a long time. Maybe Dragonlance compares or something like that. But anyway, there you go.